Welcome back everyone. Welcome to Cloud Learner Pro channel. In this video, I'm going to train you on Microsoft Azure Administrator. Firstly, we'll try to understand what is data center. Why we need data center? So data center is a physical location or a building where we can host physical devices like physical servers, storage servers, network switches, routers, hub, etc., etc. Data center is essential to run an organization where they can run their applications and save their data. A couple of examples of data center vendors are IBM, CTRLS, NextGen, etc., etc. The organization will own their data center or they will take the data center services from a third party vendor. So if you are going to cloud computing, for example, what is cloud computing? Cloud computing is nothing but on-demand availability of cloud services like compute, storage, network, database, etc. services, which we can access over internet. What is the advantage of this cloud computing? Why we need cloud computing? The advantage or the benefit of cloud computing is we can eliminate the capital or the investment, which is essential to set up a physical infrastructure. For us, not only eliminating the capital or investment, it also helps us in scaling the infrastructure on demand whenever we need to scale the infrastructure. We can easily scale the infrastructure. And it also provides high availability as well as it also provides high security as well. This is about cloud computing. And going to the types of cloud computing we have public cloud we have uh, private cloud we have uh, hybrid cloud and multi cloud so these are the four types of cloud computing models which are available currently in the market so if i talk about public cloud what is public cloud public cloud is nothing but the data centers which are managed by cloud service provider where we are going to host our services that is called as public cloud so in this public cloud any organization can host their data that means it is not a dedicated data center these public cloud data centers are shared data centers whereas multiple organizations can access the data or they can host their services or run their applications in this public cloud data centers over the internet from anywhere in the world. So to give examples of uh, public cloud, I can call out Azure, AWS, Google, etc, etc. So this public cloud is beneficial for us in, in terms of cost, in terms of high availability, security, et cetera, et cetera. So if we are looking for a public cloud, we can go with any one of these vendors which are presented in this screen. And if I talk about private cloud, what is private cloud? Private cloud is also a data centers which are managed by private cloud service providers. We have lots of private cloud service providers available in the market. So if you're having dedicated data centers for organizations, so that kind of cloud model is called as private cloud. Like organizations will have dedicated data center services and only a single organization can access the data or they can upload the data or they can run their services or application. So that type of model is called as private cloud. Whereas in public cloud, it is a shared uh, data center service model, whereas multiple organizations can upload the data, run their services or application. So that's the clear difference between public cloud and private cloud. If I call out the examples of private cloud, we have IBM, we have OpenStock, we have uh, HP, Dell, et cetera, et cetera. So if I go and talk about hybrid cloud now, what is hybrid cloud? Hybrid cloud is nothing but if you are using private cloud and public cloud the combination of this public and private cloud is called as hybrid cloud if you are using private and public cloud combinedly that is called as hybrid cloud 
and what is multi cloud we also have something called as multi cloud right so this multi cloud is nothing but if you are using mix of public clouds that type of uh, cloud model we call it as multi cloud like if an organization is using aws microsoft google and private cloud all this combination or any one of these two combinations or three combinations we call it as multi cloud so that's a quick explanation about um, cloud computing uh, public cloud private cloud hybrid cloud and multi cloud now let's jump on to azure cloud we'll understand what is azure cloud now with the explanation till now i gave i can define azure cloud something like this whereas azure cloud is one of the cloud computing model in which it falls under public cloud whereas it provides shared service data centers to multiple organizations across the world uh, and this azure cloud manages the data center services whereas multiple organization can host their application or they can run their services so if you want to host your data or if you want to run your applications or uh, services you can simply create an azure account or you can create your subscription and you can host your data or run your applications so i hope the explanation is clear whereas azure cloud is a public cloud where it offers shared data center services to multiple organizations across the world so azure cloud is one of the cloud computing model so i have given the explanation about public private uh, hybrid multi multi clouds uh, to make you understand under which category the azure cloud will go and fall if i talk about azure deployment models we have three deployment models in azure i will create in detail video about these three uh, deployment models but for now i'm going with a very high level explanation here so we have the first deployment model as iaas which stands for infrastructure as a service under which we have examples like virtual machines vnet storage accounts etc etc we have the another deployment model as pass which stands for platform as a service uh where we have examples like app service function app logic apps and azure sql we have the third deployment model as saas whereas saas stands for software as a service we have examples like salesforce g suite office 365 so i'm covering this much about deployment models i'll create uh, the next video about ias paas and saas i'll give a clear picture what is this deployment models uh and what 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 are the responsibilities will lie with a customer will lie with a cloud service provider i'll give a in detail explanation about uh, this deployment models in my next video so for now i am covering this much and i am moving on to the next topic whereas i want to talk about the types of services what we have in azure i have also created one video which is very short video of 2 uh, to 3 minutes where i was covering about azure portal overview in which i explained about azure services as well in azure portal we have lots of services if i go to azure portal now let me just go to azure portal uh, and show you services now i am in the azure portal so if you want to see the types of services we have in azure you can navigate uh, the cursor to all services here you can see what are the types of services we have in azure we have uh, ia services we have pass services we have saas services all the types of services we have in azure like uh, if i go to general you can see we have subscription we have cost management help and support etc here uh, compute we have virtual machines virtual machine scale set app service we have uh, uh, disks option here uh, all those comes under compute and network we have virtual network load balancers um uh, nsgs express routes network watcher all these comes under networking services we also have storage services web services iot services devops services all the services are available in azure portal depending on our requirement we can create the resources and we can manage the resources in the azure portal so that's the services details now let me go back to the slide again 
that's about the services what we have in Azure portal. Uh, if uh, I talk about the Azure hierarchy, Azure services hierarchy, whenever you are creating your Azure account, it can be your free trial account, it can be your organization account, there will be a tenant ID which will get generated. So tenant ID is nothing but you are creating or registering your account in Azure, it is going to get an ID. So that ID we call it as Azure tenant ID. So if you are not having a tenant ID, that means you have not created your account, you have not registered in Azure account. So once you create your account, then only you can get your Azure tenant. So this will be your top level hierarchy. After that, you can purchase your subscriptions, Azure subscriptions. So that means under tenant only, you can have your subscription. I have got a couple of questions previously, whereas uh, many of, uh, I have got a couple of questions about this subscription and tenant, whereas they're asking me under subscription, can I have tenant? So it is not possible actually. So under subscription, you cannot have tenant because the top level hierarchy is tenant. So only under tenant, you can have your subscription, not under subscription, you can have tenant. So under tenant, you can have subscription. That means under single tenant, you can have multiple subscription like 100 600 1000 so depending on our requirement we can create multiple subscriptions under single tenant but under subscription we cannot have tenants because top level hierarchy is azure tenants the second level hierarchy is azure subscriptions after having azure subscription you can create your azure resource groups i have already created video about Azure subscriptions and Azure resource group, which is also uploaded in my YouTube channel. Yes, if you want to go through those videos, you can just have a look about what is Azure subscription, what is Azure resource group as well. After Azure resource group, the last level hierarchy is Azure resource. The resource is nothing but, it can be your IAS resource, it can be your task resource, or it can be your AD resource. Any kind of resource which you're creating, you need to have the top level hierarchy, Prerequisites to be met. If you take an example, like if someone is asking you to create a virtual machine, to create a virtual machine, what are the prerequisites? You need to create a resource group. So, to create resource group, what is the prerequisite? We need to have an Azure subscription. If Azure subscription access is not available for you, that means if you are not having Azure subscription access, then obviously you will not have access to uh, create a resource group and you cannot create a resource. That time you can say, hey, I'm not having access to subscription. Can you provide access to subscription so that I can create a resource group and resource? So that's how you need to deal. So how and when you can deal like this, you are having clear understanding about the Azure services hierarchy. So if you're in a dilemma saying, if I have access to tenant, I can create anything in Azure portal, that's wrong. You need to have access to subscription and you should have permission to create resources as well as resource group. So then only you will be able to create the resources. So here comes the end of this session. I hope uh, this information uh, which I provided in this video is useful for all of you. If you like this video, please support my channel by clicking on subscribe button and please like, share and comment for this channel. Thank you. Thanks for your time.